The golden rule of solubility summarizes the solubility rule in three words, like dissolves like. And what that means is polar solvents dissolve polar molecules and nonpolar solvents dissolve nonpolar molecules. So to be able to predict solubility, you need, you need to determine whether something is nonpolar or polar. So let's look at nonpolar compounds. Oils are nonpolar compounds. They are made mostly of hydrocarbon chains. And as non, mostly nonpolar, they are attracted to one another by London forces. On the other hand, water is a polar molecule. And it can interact through dipole-dipole interaction, hydrogen bonding, and even ion-dipole attractions. So oil and water exhibit unlike attractive forces. Therefore, oil and water do not dissolve in one another. On the slide is a Hayworth projection of sucrose, which is table sugar. You may know from your everyday life that table sugar does dissolve in water, and that's because it is a polar molecule. Sugar, like all car carbohydrates, has hydroxyl groups, and these hydroxyl groups can hydrogen bond with the water and also make this molecule um, polar. Thus, sucrose and water can interact through dipole-dipole as well as hydrogen bonding interactions. So because of the polarity of the sucrose molecule, it is soluble in water or it dissolves in water. If we look at ionic compounds, they are made of positive and negative charges. That is very polar. Not all ionic compounds will dissolve in water, but if an ionic compound does dissolve in water, then the positive ion will be surrounded by the partial negative oxygen, and the negative ion will be surrounded by the partial positive hydrogen of water. So water as a polar substance is able to dissolve an ionic substance.